Red Dead Redemption 2 is like a gift that keeps on giving. I've sunk in maybe 50 hours, but at the same rate I'm not really counting because the game's just that immersive. Now there's one thing in the game that's intrigued me perhaps a little bit more than it should have, and it seems to be having the same effect on a lot of other players as well. Of course, I'm talking about the random encounter with this fella. Please. Hello. Ah, oh, listen. Have you seen? I'm looking for my friend Gavin. I don't know any Gavins, I'm afraid. English bloke. Lovely fella. He went missing, and uh, now I'm all alone. Good luck. What's weird is you're not provided the option to help. Arthur simply says good luck and moves along. And this guy just doesn't relent. You will find him anywhere in the game. Listen, have you seen... I'm looking for my friend, Gavin. I don't know any Gavins, I'm afraid. English bloke. Lovely fella. He went missing and, uh, now I'm all alone. Good luck. That's, uh, that's too bad. As you can tell, Gavin's one slippery bastard. You can encounter this guy multiple times in one playthrough, and if you don't kill him, it'll probably go into the dozens. Now, based on the sheer mass of people actually playing this game and the amount of people taking interest online about Gavin and the fact that nobody's speaking up about the fact that they found him, we can safely assume, nearly, that he's not in the game. Why? because this is clearly a running joke. But at the same rate, it does appear as if Rockstar want us to take interest in this guy, because Gavin's friend appears everywhere. Now, with this guy just waddling about saying, Gavin, where are you, mate? I'm looking for you. Please s suck me off. I'm lonely. It A, got very annoying, and B, wasn't getting anywhere. So, Red Dead Redemption 2, being the gift that it is, made me encounter him in a very secluded spot. I killed him. So here's Gavin's friend laying in a pool of his own blood after I killed him. Before I left, I decided to search him to find that he had a letter on his body. The letter reads as follows. Dear Nigel, I'd assume that's Gavin's friend's name. I was so happy to hear from you. I cannot believe it, mate. My two friends, you and Gavin, boys I grew up with, now real rich and successful cowboys in America. That's incredible news and bullshit. Well done, mate. Seriously, well done. I knew you and Gavin would find success over there. I mean, it stands to reason a pair of boys from Little Old Maidenhead, Berkshire, now successful over in America, I might come and join you myself. Now that you have done so well, both of you rich and living in big mansions with servants and all them cattle, I remember when the height of your ambition was pretending you were a Londoner and seeing if you fooled those Scotch boys we met by the barracks. Funny thing is, Gavin never mentioned none of this in his letter, but he always was a bit of a quiet one, and I reckon you wrote after he did. Either way, I am made up for the pair of you. Made up. Cowboys. Millionaires. We miss you. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is true, but they're definitely not cowboys. So they appear to be bullshitting their mates back in the United Kingdom. Following on from we miss you, especially your mum since your dad passed on. But she told me she was proud of you. Even Gavin's ma was happy. She said her usual piece about not thinking you had it in you, but she smiled and said she knew her boy would see sense or make sense or something eventually. Berkshire forever. Your pal, Tom. P.S. I saw that bloke, Brian Gold, the other day in the market. He said some real odd things about you, which I said weren't true. Bet he's laughing on the other side of his face now. Now, although this tells us nothing about what happened to Gavin, it just gives us a little bit of an insight into this character who we can assume is called Nigel. It appears as if they've been bullshitting their friends back in the UK. For one, they're definitely not cowboys because, let's face it, they're wetter than baby wipes. And they're definitely not millionaires, otherwise Nigel would have offered money to help him find Gavin. He did not. So all we can get from this letter really is that Gavin does technically exist, and this Nigel fellow isn't just some schizophrenic. Unless he wrote the letter himself, that'd be fucking weird. So where is Gavin? Now given that the letter told us that the height of their ambition was once trying to convince Scotch boys that they were in fact Londoners when they were actually from Maidenhead, Berkshire, and that they're tricking their friends and families back in the United Kingdom saying that they're millionaires when they're really not, it would appear as if Nigel and Gavin are either really good pranksters or con men. If they're really good pranksters, for all we know, 
Gavin might just be chilling somewhere, and Nigel knows exactly where he is, trying to see if he can have anybody on. Or if they're con men, maybe he pissed off the wrong person and Nigel's yet to catch on to it. Theory number three, they're both failures, and they wanted to compensate somehow, and then the burden of the lie got too much for Gavin and he offed himself somewhere secluded. The letter does also suggest that that is possible. Or theory number four, Nigel's full of shit and Gavin decided to fuck off back home to England. As you can see here, it could literally be anything, and the game doesn't appear to intend to solve it. So for our sanity sake do we leave it as a running joke maybe that's the best option but let me know what you think down in the comment section what's going on with this and why is it giving so many players the willies but anyways thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed this short little video that was a bit of fun above all else entertaining the where is gavin shenanigans i hope you enjoyed be sure to go ahead leave a like subscribe share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff and i'll see you all very soon with another video at some point